Welcome, Low Flow Wines. Here we are, the basics, how to taste wine like a professional wine buyer. Uh, but first, if you like this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button and the give me a thumbs up. Uh, it'd be much appreciated. So what we're going to do and cover in this um, in this little, little session here is how to taste wine professionally. We're going to look at uh, swirling and why, addressing colour, uh, nosing and smelling the wine, tasting the wine, swirling the wine, the length, and then finally, consistent routine. Let's get into it. So, first of all, we just want to pour um, a tasting measure. It's not a full glass, it's just a little splash of wine, enough to coat the inside of the glass uh, and enough to start swirling around about that much 50 ml. Onto swirling. Now, obviously, it can look really cool if you can do it, and people do it on the um, on a desk or on a, on a table makes it a little bit easier if you're starting off, but um, there is a logical reason as to why we swirl, and it's basically we're trying to get as much air and oxygen into the glass as possible to help the wine express itself. Basically increasing the surface area. You'll see here there's probably about maybe five, seven centimeters of wine touching um, touching oxygen. And as we swell that and it increases, it's really just allowing more more wine uh, to touch up, um, the atmosphere and to really start to express itself. It's that simple. Then looking at color, the best way to do this is with a white background. And what we really are looking to do here is just to just to note whether the colour is bright, if it's dull, um, if it's youthful or, or old, is there browning on the rim, uh, what kind of colour is it, is it red, pink, um, pale, we just want to note what that is and, and also how dense it is, you know, like can you see through it, is it really, really deep, because all of those things give us a um, potential indicator of what, what varietal it might be or more importantly some of the processes that may have happened uh, in the winery to give us the wine in the glass that we've got. Then on to nosing, we want to be really, really careful that we're not um, overstimulating our senses. So start from start from far away and work your way towards it as you start to engage with the aroma. And don't stick your beak in there and give it a really big inhale because we are then going to completely overload what's going on. You'll need to kind of reset and refresh your, your, your senses. So little and often and start from far away and always come back to it. Always give yourself a chance just to, quick, just to have a quick refresh and, and reset of your senses. And that way you can really start to um, notice the, the subtle aromas and changes um, that, that can happen and that can come about in a wine. Then on to tasting. So similar to nosing, we don't want to overload senses. So enough wine in the palate to be able to coat your, to coat your gums, your teeth, your, your cheeks and your tongue. Uh, and also to start to feel a little bit of a sensation in the back palate. We want to give it a, a really big swirl around in the mouth. Again, more air and more oxygen into the wine to help us express itself. Um, and then just really start to feel what's going on. Like, is it dry? Is it grippy? Are you finding yourself going like this and chewing on the wine? Because again, all of those sensations tell you something about the level of quality, the, what kind of processes have, have happened to the wine. And, and you can start to develop um, an appreciation and understanding of those things. Then onto the length. Now, this is something where it's a sensation that can really start to uh, be noticed down um, pretty much from here all the way down to your throat. So again, it's more looking at and feeling the sensation of, is it just in the front part of your palate? Or is it really starting to, to reach down your throat? Can you get a spicy kick down here? Or, or is it a little bit warming to here and so on and so forth? Because again, that tells us something, um, but tells us something potentially about what's happened or, or to, to the wine or, or what's going on with the wine outside of the realms of tasting. And then into a consistent routine. We're getting into this routine of pouring a sampling measure, swirling, noting the color of the wine, nosing it little and often is just a really good habit to start to get into with the more wine you taste the more that your palate and your and your um, ability to detect things will increase and it just helps to to really start to practice the very very basics of this every time you have a wine so that's it for me this is that's the basics we're going to go into a lot more detail in future videos but um any questions please hit me up in the comment section and uh yeah like and subscribe to the channel and video thanks very much my fellow wives